everyone, welcome back to another episode of Phil at the Movies, the weekly show where I give you my philosophy on some of the latest movies and the state of cinema. You are listening to episode number 125 of this ongoing podcast. I'm your host, Phil Walsh, and right at the top, I want to say thank you to everyone for tuning in each and every Friday. Whether you are listening to this on Apple or Spotify or watching it on YouTube, I appreciate all of the support, all of the listens, all of the downloads, all of the watches. If you are listening to this on Apple, certainly if you could rate and review it, it does help, again, with those pesky algorithms. The same on YouTube, if you could like and subscribe, again, helps grow the base, grow the numbers. But I have to say right at the uh, the start here, we are fast approaching 10,000 downloads for this show. That is certainly no easy feat, and it is only made possible by you, the listeners, you, the friends of this show. And so I mean it when I say thank you every week for tuning in and watching this show and listening to it and sharing it and commenting on it. It means the world to me, and I am forever in your debt. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now today, for the topic of conversation. I'm going to be discussing my thoughts to one of the summer's biggest films. Now, you're probably thinking, what movie could that be? Because the summer box office has been on fire in the best possible way. And uh, while there is a thought that I might be speaking about Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, that is not the topic of today's show. Though I have to make a brief comment because that film recently became the highest rated, or excuse me, the highest grossing R-rated film of all time, dethroning 2019's Joker. So Joker held that spot for nearly five years, and it took Deadpool and Wolverine, Ryan Reynolds, and Hugh Jackman to come along and topple the clown. Uh, You can imagine there's a little bit of sadness when I say that, of being a big fan of Joker, but nevertheless, Deadpool and Wolverine is wild summer entertainment, and it is no easy feat to accomplish what they have accomplished with this year's film, so I applaud them, I salute them, and I look forward to a friendly and healthy competition come October when Joker fully adieu opens nationwide and worldwide, but enough of that for the time being and all of that marvelous entertainment. Uh, see, See what I did there? No, today I am going to be talking about another movie that has been a hit at the box office this summer, while nowhere near close to the box office revenue of Deadpool and Wolverine, I am going to be giving you my thoughts on the follow-up to the 1996 film Twister, starring Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton. This summer saw the release of the sequel, appropriately named Twisters. Now, this film stars Glenn Powell and Daisy Edgar-Jones, and pretty much outside of the fact that the characters are chasing tornadoes, there's very little connection or or really recognition to the 1996 film. Sure, there are some nods and and winks, but this is not a, a, a direct sequel in the sense that it picks up with any of the threads from the previous film. And I have to say, that's honestly the the best way to go. I would not call this a legacy sequel, even though it certainly uh, operates in that kind of realm. This isn't a Jurassic World, so to speak. Now, Twister is a wild film (laughs) in more ways than one. And looking back on the film that starred Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton, it really is a nonstop thrill ride that really encapsulates the the feeling and tenor of a lot of summer blockbusters in the 90s. It is very much a 90s film, and I would honestly say that Twisters does not capture the magic necessarily of that film because in a lot of ways... The original movie is a almost a one-and-done concept. Kind of once you've seen it, you can get the whole picture, if you will. It's hard to, to recreate the excitement and energy of a, of a film that is essentially about people chasing tornadoes for a living. 
that is the plot of the sequel. The background involves Daisy Edgar Jones' character who works for a group whose job is to track and, and chase tornadoes. And after a tragedy befalls her group, she isolates and sort of withdraws from the work of storm chasing. But that is a, until a friend sort of brings her out of a, her self-imposed exile to head down to Oklahoma and track more storms and implement some technology that she has been working on to try and disrupt these storms in order to try and avert damage, destruction, and death. In addition to Daisy Edgar Jones, the film stars Glenn Powell as a, a social media influencer, a, a tornado wrangler, if you will. And I have to say right off the bat, Glenn Powell makes this movie. This film would not be as entertaining, it would not be as exciting without his on-screen presence and charisma. The film is filled with a lot of the usual tropes and uh, characters, if you will, that you might find in a quote-unquote disaster movie. Uh, Daisy Edgar Jones' character of Kate, she's trying to process all of her external and internal grief and sort of getting her head back into the game. Uh, Glenn Powell's character of Tyler is sort of the wild, rambunctious, devil-may-care individual who's really doing what he does for the fame and, and the glory, and it's sort of this uh, you know, butting of heads, if you will. Uh, the film doesn't uh, certainly uh, swirl, if you will. Uh, it doesn't twist into the usual uh, uh, will-they-won't-they uh, cliche that a lot of these types of films uh, end up relying on, though there are hints at perhaps a romance, which again, if, if, that's, your, if that's your jam, you can certainly uh, find uh, something to enjoy with that regard. But back to Glenn Powell, because I said this before in the past, he is a certified movie star. There is no denying it. Uh, certainly he has the box office appeal. This film has done remarkably well, making over $300 million worldwide, which again, for this type of a film, given that this sequel, the, the original film, I should say, came out in 1996, it makes it even more impressive. Uh, but just in terms of his his presence, uh, you know, no disrespect to... Uh, to Daisy Edgar Jones or, or the rest of the cast, uh, including uh, David Cornsweet and uh, Kieran Shipka, who's in it uh, just at the at the start of the film, Powell just has that on-screen charisma, and, and really, he the film is make is made or or, or broken by Powell's performance. Uh, for me, he was the best part of it. He's he's funny. He's sort of that charismatic. A fool in a way, but but he's not a, a sort of a stereotypical dumb character. Uh, there's a heart to him, and again, just Powell just has that ability to elevate the material that, in another actor's hands, may fall flat or, or not go anywhere. And, and he really gives the film added energy to kind of power on through. Because while I enjoyed this film, it is nothing spectacular I guess I would say this is it it's, does not capture or recapture the magic and innovation of the original film I, I was actually talking about this with a friend Twisters is one of those sequels where you sort of say did it need to happen now I know that's sort of a uh, a, a really brash statement to make, particularly when Hollywood is filled with sequels and, and continuations of stories and, and IPs. But the original film is the definition, I feel, of lightning in a bottle. And so you're, you're never going to recapture that in this particular film. You also had the dynamic of, of, of Bill Paxton and, and Helen Hunt, and that's just not replicated. Not that it has to be with Powell and, uh, and Daisy Edgar Jones, but that is, again, certainly another element that was very present in the first film, as well as just the, the ingenuity and creativity of that, of that story. But I had a great time with this film. It, it's, a, it's a solid popcorn blockbuster. I, it really does feel like a callback, in a way, to 
movies from yesteryear. I've said that actually a lot recently with a number of films that have come out, thinking back to The Fall Guy from earlier in the summer, even Furiosa to an extent. These, these sort of movies that feel like a, a throwback to the, the big budget spectacles or, or the wild summer popcorn movies of the early 2000s or the, or the, the mid to late 90s. Twisters is right in that, that sweet spot. And again, don't expect to go in and have your, your life uh, turned upside down or, or get caught up in a, in a whirlwind of, of, a, of a wild and engaging story. It, it's straightforward. It knows what it's doing. It doesn't try to pretend to be something else. It's a entertaining disaster movie. And while there is obviously a little bit of CGI here and there, the, the effects in the film are quite effective, <laughs> to, to put it one way. And, and I just found myself thoroughly engaged and entertained from start to finish. And sort of tying into comments I made with uh, my review from last week, sometimes that's all a movie has to do. It just has to be fine in the best possible way. I think sometimes we get into that mindset where we're like, oh my God, if it doesn't change my world, it's a disaster. Or, oh, that was the greatest thing since sliced bread. It, it doesn't have to be that way. Sometimes a movie can just accomplish what it needs to accomplish by being entertaining, having great character dynamics, and just sort of delivering all of the familiar hits, if you will, in the best possible way. So I enjoyed Twisters. I would recommend it. It came out back in July, and I've just been you know, trying to get it on the agenda for uh, for this uh, show, and finally this, this week presented the opportunity. So I wanted to kind of, you know, before we close out summer entirely, I wanted to uh, give my thoughts on this film. It, it's a solid summer blockbuster. You, know, you could question, it you know, was it really necessary uh, to be a sequel to the 96 film? But from a pure entertainment uh, factor, great performance by Powell, who I said again, carries the movie from start to finish. It, it, it's a great time, and I would certainly recommend it now that it is available uh, on streaming. So if you did miss it at the theater, you have an option to, to catch it that way. But it is still playing at the theater. So again, I would encourage you, if you are looking for maybe a, a fun, easy movie on a, a Friday or Saturday, check out Twisters. This is a great family film. It's a great uh, date night movie in a lot of ways. And again, it's, it, it's not a movie that you need to worry about, oh, if I didn't see the first film, am I going to be lost? I mean, it, it, it's all right there in the title, Twisters, enough said. So that's my thoughts on the, the sequel. I enjoyed it, didn't, didn't rock my world, but it didn't have to. I just had a good time with it, and sometimes that is all that matters with movies. Well, that does it for me today. Have you seen Twisters? What did you think of it? Would you recommend it? Let me know in the comments, either on social media or in the comment section on YouTube. But that will do it for me today. As always, want to thank you for tuning in each week and hearing what I have to say on movies. Next week, I will be tackling Strange Darling. And uh, not going to say anything more, but uh, go ahead and look up the trailer for that movie and uh, I, I think you'll be amazed and, and intrigued a, as I am. And I'm looking forward to seeing that film this weekend. But until next week, everybody, take care. Have a great weekend. And I'll be back next week. And we will do this all over again for the love of movies.